Yo, what up, Eusebius here, back at it again with another video, and I am what the medical field would call psychotic. That doesn't mean I'm dangerous, that doesn't mean I need to be locked up in a mental institution, that just means I, I exist in a state known as psychosis, and that is a car driving by that is very, very annoying. <laughs> but anyway, I exist in a state known as psychosis, which in simple terms is a break from reality, where I perceive things that are not real. There are a lot of other, um, um, uh, not side effects, but there are a lot of other um, smaller, more annoying um, aspects of this condition, but that is not what we're going to be doing, or that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to be doing another Art of the Mentally Ill where I write out, not write, where I draw out, where I draw out art, where I try to encompass certain feelings or emotions or, you know, visuals, anything. So, if you're coming from my earlier videos, you know for a fact that, well, when it comes down to it, Kamiano and Hisavius are the same person, there is no difference, and I decided to make that more obvious by changing my avatar a little bit. So, without further ado, let's get into the art. This is what I like to call the boy and the beast. Now, for some of you who have read a lot of horror stories, you know that the story, The Boy and the Beast, is one that is actually pretty popular. The story goes that there was a a young boy, I think he was nine years old, and every night there would be a monster underneath his bed and it would talk to him and it would taunt him until eventually the monster came out and the boy beat it down with a metal baseball bat. So that is a story summed up really quickly. And this is something that I wanted to encompass the kind of terror that you feel when something you don't understand is standing right above you, staring down at you, almost as if it's staring into your soul. So, this right here, this is the beast. And this over here is the boy. You can vaguely see some facial features like eyes over here and eyebrows over here and cheekbones over here and mouth over here. I really wanted to encompass fear, not exactly replicating what a human face would look like realistically, but something that pertains to the human face, something that looks vaguely human, but at the same time is not exactly normal. <laughs> I wanted it to be a personification of fear. And this is the beast. So I wanted to make sort of like um, what I would envision the devil to look like with uh, goat horns and um, a this is supposed to be a septum <laughs> piercing that I just thought was um, was a characteristic that a lot of people who are a little bit more risk takers have um, that's not to say that everyone who has a septum ring is uh, septum piercing is like that but I, regardless I just imagine that the devil sort of would be a goat with a with many many piercings and I have a lot of piercings. I have nine piercings. So <laughs> my ears are littered with piercings. So no judgment there. If you, if you have a septum piercing, then whatever. I don't give a shit. Anyway. So why did I choose to base a drawing off of the boy and the beast? Well, as you heard in the beginning, I perceive things differently than other people. Essentially, that means I hallucinate. I've hallucinated people who stand over my bed, terrifying me. Creatures that, if you know anything about Hawaii, or if you know anything about um, Obake files, then you would definitely know that when I say I see a menehune, or menehuni, whichever way it's pronounced, that, well, I'm not exactly over-exaggerating. <laughs> but yeah, this is the boy and the beast the boy and the beast so hope you enjoyed this little talk um if you if you're in an emergency and need to talk to someone i always have links down below i hope you all enjoyed i'll catch you in the next one